Mackinac Island. We are here today to tour the island. This is Fort Mackinac up on top of the ridge. The public area. Mackinac Island is unique. No motorized, motorized vehicles allowed. Everything is either by bicycle, foot, or horse traffic. Scout Barracks. In 1929, Park Commissioner Roger Andrews invited eight Eagle Scouts, including future President Gerald Ford, to serve as the Governor's Honor Guard and tour guides at Fort Mackinac. Scouts raised and lowered the colors daily and fired the sunset gun. They stayed in the Fort Commissary until moving into these barracks built in 1934. The building was constructed by the Mackinac Island Civilian Conservation Corps unit many of whom were World War I veterans. In 1938, the program began to include Boy Scouts at all levels. Additions to the barracks were completed in 1961 and in 1975. They followed the style of the original building. At the urging of Michigan First Lady Helen Milliken, Girl Scouts joined the Scout Service Program in 1974. This is Michigan Governor's summer residence on Mackinac Island. Right now they're doing a little bit of upkeep on it, it looks like. Nice place to spend part of your term. Beautiful surroundings. British Commander Patrick Sinclair moved Fort Mikkel at Mackinac from the mainland, modern day Mackinac City, to this spot in 1780 during the American Revolution. Sinclair chose Mackinac Island because this high limestone bluff would protect the soldiers from American attack. Fort Mackinac remained an active military port, fort until the United States soldiers left in 1895. Fort Mackinac soldiers planted a garden in this large open space in front of the fort. Vegetables such as cabbage, leeks, carrots, radishes, onions, and squash supplemented their daily diet of meat and bread. Fences around the garden protected their crops from the wandering cattle and the playful children. The Army closed Fort Mackinac in 1895. Four years later, the old garden was dedicated as a park honoring Father Marquette. Marquette established a Jesuit mission on Mackinac Island in 1670. Mackinac Island, downtown. See some of the harbor, and uh, down below is the uh, gra in that grassy area. That's where they used to have their gardens, that where they would grow their fr fresh vegetables. And over here to the right, you'll see downtown Mackinac Island that has uh, all the stores, things of that nature. The uh, fort over here, as we pan over to the right, we're going to see some yellow umbrellas. That actually offers a tea time. That uh, We will participate in that. It's run by the Grand Hotel. And so, a uh, beautiful day today. Hardly any wind. And I just couldn't ask for a better day. Fort Holmes sits on the highest point of Mackinac Island. It was originally occupied by the British. And in 1812, the British built Fort, Fort George. In 1814, America attempted to take back the island and were not successful. 
America attempted again to take back the fort in 1815 and were successful. Although they weren't able to hold on to it very long because on July 17th, 1815, the British landed on the other side of the island, brought a can one cannon to the top of this hill along with men. When the Americans woke up the next day in Fort McHenry, they saw that basically they were surrounded and quickly surrendered. After the War of 1812, the fort was returned to America by Treaty of Gaunt. In 1892, both forts were decommissioned, and this fort was put into the National Park Service. And then uh, in 1895, it was transferred to the Michigan State Park Service. In 1934, fire broke out and destroyed what was left of the, uh, of the fort, original fort. In 1935, the Michigan Park Service decided to rebuild the fort using the original English plans. In 1960, the original rebuild, or the first rebuild, was uh, pretty much worn out. And in 1968, the, uh, it was completely dismantled. The fort was then rebuilt between the years 2014 and 2015 using the original plans outlined by the British.